it for the, for the sun. And if you know the law is keeping you, then why are you going to worry about today? Why are you worried about today? Amen. Amen. Why are you worried about today? Song, um, you gotta play it on the piano, but you gotta get that to it. It said, In loving kindness, Jesus came, and my soul and mercy to a claim, excuse me.
and tell us we like praying today so if you hear me singing like like a, a praying singing praying and <laughs> talk about sleepwalking right sleep talking and sleepwalking right? and um I'm praying singing and God is good and I believe that you know it it is so appropriate for the message and the word today because you might not know this, but I took those words straight out of the Bible. <clears throat> My God, hallelujah, amen. Thank God for being able to sing His praise and to, um, to be refreshed by the word. And today, as I said, you know, sometimes I, last week I told you I was writing the, the title and the Lord told me, go back in the Bible. And look at what's written there and so I changed it right to exactly what I saw written there and today the Word of God is coming out of Luke chapter chapter 5 I'm gonna read the scripture and um, I hope you can find it in your Bible and, and follow along amen let me take a sip from this thing because my throat is getting dry and I don't want to stop in the middle, so let me just stop. This thing doesn't really taste good though, but it's good for your throat. It's good for your, your body, for your immune system, right? Okay, so the scripture says here, but so much, I'm reading from verse um, 15, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and what? Prayed. That's what I was just talking about. Alright? Let me just try to read this thing before I comment really but you know as the Holy Ghost in the utterance and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them I told you I took it straight out of the word. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought unto him a man which was sick with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in. And, and, um, and to lay him before him. You know, sometimes, because I know the story in different Bibles, like Matthew, sometimes I have to read carefully. I say I'm reading it like sound like Matthew, <laughs> because, you know what I'm saying, say, different, different writers have it, different words, right? And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the house top and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. You heard that? And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemous? Who can forgive sins but God alone? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They didn't say it aloud enough, but it's going on in their, their head, you know? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say unto, easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that he may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth to forgive sins, 
He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that which he lay, whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. In one rendering, I think it might have said, We never saw it in this fashion. If you ever heard that expression before, it came from the Bible. It said, and, and um, so we're going to stop right there with that reading. But the Bible tells you about Jesus. The scripture was saying that um, when he healed the, per, the man of leprosy, he told him, don't go and tell anybody. I mean, just go and, you know, go back to your home and thank God, you know, and so forth. Don't tell anybody. But everybody was talking about him, right? But who could not? How could you really keep your mouth closed? How could you, right? <clears throat> I mean... I mean, somebody has been really good to you. Somebody has been really good to you. Somebody has been has touched your life in in a in in, in a, a special way. You're gonna be talking about that person. You're gonna be telling your friends, right? You're gonna be telling even your enemies if you have any. You know, you can. I mean, well, you will have enemies no matter who you try. But I'm saying you're gonna be talking about it. You have to talk about it. Every time when you read this thing, you know, the Lord, I always say, I mean, I say, but you have to ask, them, is this a test or something? How can you tell me not to talk about it? Because, you know, remember when, I spoke, um, when we did the message about who did sin? The Bible tells you that when the man was, was blind and they started walking around, they were saying to him, like, somebody was saying, like, this looks like him. Is this the man? They said, and they were reading, and arguing, and, and the man had to clarify the matter. You see, you, it's me. It's me. Right? And then the next question, well, people asked, like, so how did this happen? Right? So he, he had to declare himself. So I'm saying, you cannot hide what God has done. Right? And so I, I just see to the test that Jesus, the Lord, sent him, must keep quiet because. How many of you going to keep quiet, quiet and not talk about what God has done for you? I know some people don't like to talk about what God has done for them because they seem to think that they are oblig God is obligated to do anything for you. He's not. Okay? With a heart full of gratitude, a heart full of, of um, compassion, um, of um, thankfulness, these things will just flow out of you. Right? You feel like, I mean, I'm so important, I mean, you know, you know, who are you? Who am I? I know, and, and, and the people of God who, who are really conscious of this, they actually receive more blessing, and they draw closer to God. Amen? Because the closer you are, you know, sometimes you, you, are, you have your Wi-Fi, as I said, right? And you step outside your house, and maybe you step onto the street, and if you're using something with Wi-Fi, it might just cut off. Is that true? Yes, it might. It might just cut out because what? It, it can't pick up a signal because you're too far away. So the closer you draw to God, the Bible said, you, you, you draw nigh to God, you draw nigh to you. The closer you draw to Him, the more you get out of Him. You know that. Right? So the Bible said that Jesus went, drew Himself, and, and so much the more He told them to keep quiet, that fame went abroad. And the Bible said, Multitudes came to hear and to be healed of their infirmities. And I like that because the Bible is saying that they not only came to be healed, but they came to hear the word of God. And remember that the word of God is what ministers to the soul. Right? Okay? The healing was for the body, but you need it for the soul. Because the soul is what will endure unto eternal life. And, and many people are just inter interested in for the body, which will perish anyway, okay? But you need it for the soul. And people are coming to him, but the Bible said, 
after a while Jesus just withdrew himself from them. He just pulled away and he was gone. And people were like, where was he? He was in a solitary place. He was in a lonely place. And there he was talking to God. There is no way you can go through this life without talking to God in a solitary place, in a wilderness as it were, in a place by himself where you want to talk to him one on one. Okay? You know what I'm saying? You, if you have your, your friend and your, your good friend or your spouse and so, you must have a time when you talk one on one. Right? Where you just, you know, just the two of you. The two of you, nobody else. Right? It won't be well while you um, are with the rest of the family. It won't be when you are in the supermarket. It won't be when you are in the store or, or something like that, or in the bus or something like that. Right? Because certain things you can't talk in the bus, certain things you can't talk in, in, in the supermarket. Right? And in, the, in any case, you're there for shopping. You are, your mind is on something else. Okay? You must have that, that secret place, that time with God. Okay? And the Lord said, example, yeah, even though He was God, in the flesh, he pulled away from them and they prayed. He was drawing from his father. He was getting himself ready for the next mission. And the Bible said, this was the mission. It said one day, on a certain day, he was in a place where Pharisees were there. Dignitaries, officials in the, in the community were there. Big time, big, big shots were there today. The right? And the Bible said they were come from all over the place. So people have come to him to listen to him from all over the place. And many of them don't even know why they come here for their ulterior motives. Who is this guy? We heard about him. Who is this man? Let's go see for ourselves. Right? As John said, they went out like, you know, like they, he said, what, 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 Lord said, why did you go out? What you see for John? What you see what the, a man clothed in soft raiment, and Jesus said it. I said, you went out. You went out. You think it was excitement? They can't come here and the Lord, they, well, as soon as they, when they come in, even before they come here, the Lord knows that they're coming. He knows that the gathering is going to be um, maybe 10,000 today. And he knows the kind of people who are going to be there in his gathering. So when they come in and they step in, he knows who they are when they step in. The Bible said that when they came that place, that day, he said the power of God was present to heal them. It means that, I don't know if you have experienced something like that, where you just know the anointing is so strong inside a place that you know that miracles, I mean great things, I mean the word of God will go forth and you know that people will be saved, you know people will be healed, and people will be delivered. And this is what the scripture is saying, that all of that was present that day. All of that was present that day. When these deceitful men came in. Right? They, when, when, when the liars and the thieves and, 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 and um, the publicans and the sinners and, and everybody, all manner of people came in that day. In other words, we're saying in the word of God that whatever your need was from God, you could have gotten it fulfilled that day. If you wanted your, 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 your bucket to be filled that day, the, the well was there and you could have gone home with it full. If you wanted the anointing inside of your stomach, as the Bible said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, it was there you could have gotten it. Anything you wanted from God that day you could have gotten it. The power of God was there. The, it was just there, just waiting for you to get to just hold on to it by faith. Amen? And the Bible tells you that they are, the Lord is, is, you know the whole story about the woman with the, with the issue of blood. There was a crowd in around her, around him, that caused her to press through. But this was the same kind of situation. 